uh, a question from the audience, and it's it's kind of a long question. I'll I'll read the pertinent parts of it. It says every candidate says they support education. Some of the new candidates are saying they will make education a bigger priority in Oxford. Oxford has built new or fairly new school buildings at all locations except for Coldwater Elementary. As a candidate for the council, what more do you want to see the city do for Oxford schools? And a second question, a follow-up question to that, is there a point where the city has given the schools enough money? Mr. Hinton, if you'll start us off with Well, I, I think education is the key to most of what uh, most of what we hope to accomplish in the future, and, uh, and our kids are our future. I hope that um, as part of the council, I want to give more funding to the schools and where they can buy computers or whatever else they need. Uh, what was the second part of the question? Uh, the second part said, is there a point where the city has given the schools enough money? Well, I think we've given um, I think we've given some money and support to the schools. We could always give more, and uh, I hope to do that if I'm elected. Thank you, Mr. Perez. As, as far as education goes, it's wonderful. Traditional education is getting loads of money from Oxford. I don't know what the number is because, you know, obviously we're not allowed to know all the numbers or what these other people have done. In the past, councils say they've done this and they've done that. Us, us that are running now don't know. We're not privy to some of that information. But I would like to see education expand in the more technical jobs like trades. I'd love to see Oxford get a trade school, sort of like what Ayers Technical College does right over the tracks in Anniston. Computers are awesome. Everybody's going to be computer age. But who's going to do your plumbing? Who's going to do your electrical? Who's going to man your water lines? Who's going to do the painting and the carpentry? We have to have skilled trades, not just educational trades. And I know that's what everybody's pushing. And I'm not against that. I'm a high school graduate, no college. But I run a successful business as a plumber. I, truck, I learned normal math, normal English. And it's got me where I need to be. My son, he loves plumbing. Do I want him to be a plumber? No. Do I have that choice? No. So I'd like to offer him everything he can to have trade schools, more training to do that. Do I think Oxford has given enough money? We've got everything we need. Name another school system in, in this part of Alabama, this part of the country that has what Oxford has athletically, Educational-wise, I think everyone's got a computer in every class. I'm not privy to that because, you know, unless you're a student, you're not about just go walking into schools to see what they've got. My kids are growing up. They're going to grow up in Oxford, so I'd love to see education continue to grow, but I don't want to see it halter either. Thank you. If ever spring we see the... The uh, seniors stand out here on the Lamar Field. They throw their hats in the air and they're very excited about going out in that real world. We've all seen our kids do that. But what we were talking about 20 years ago, they were the, they were jobs. <clears throat> they were jobs out there that they could get. I've had chemical engineers who work for me at the depot. They can't get a job now. They're not above the ground. Go anywhere in this mall you want to and say, my daughter just graduated, can I get an application for her, are you hiring? Watch what they say. As Sean was talking about, vocational training. If you're going to do something in the schools to benefit the students, is throwing that hat in there every, every year. Get them ready. Get them ready to be carpenters, electricians, plumbers, and get to be able to survive so they don't live in a trailer park to get that house on the hill. But you're not going to do it by just giving them a high school education and giving them that dream that people can be knocking on their door. They can come to work for me. It's not going to happen. Not in our lifetime, I don't think. So I, I like to see 
some kind of specialized vocational training like they do out of the ears, something like that, in the school. And, and I'm not a school teacher, I'm not a professor, so again, that goes back to, somebody said, listen to the director, I'll listen to the police chief, I'll listen to the fire, fire chief, I'll also listen to the Dr. Goodman, to what do y'all need? And that's where it worked there. And do I think they're giving enough? Uh, probably more than any, any city per capita in the state of Alabama. But it's enough. How long is a piece of rope? How high is that? They uh, do what's in the budget. Thank you. Back in 2004, when uh, I first joined the council, that council made education a priority in Oxford. And there were many things that happened from that, many visible to you, like the new Oxford High School, uh, the Armable Elementary, uh, the new Freshman Academy, and you see those facilities. But what we also invested in is programs, programs that cost money, like reading and education programs. Our vision was to have our education system the best in the state. From that, graduation rates increased from 87% in 2005 to 97% in 2011. Our failure rate in our schools has decreased to less than 1%. And our discipline cases in our schools has decreased 66%. That attention has dividends. Our schools today are using the one cent sales tax and pledging it toward new facilities that you're about to see be built, like the additions to uh, the Coldwater School and the tech prep wings that are fixing to go on to the high school. You're about to see that money spent. We gave the city, uh, excuse me, the school system $4.8 million during the first council. This last council, the school tax took over. The school's using that money. While I feel like it's sufficient at this time, if there is a program that I feel or the council feels will take our school system to the very next level, I will always be supportive of that. I agree with what every one of these guys over there says. When I came through Oxford in 1985, we had a vocational school there. I learned a trade, welding. It got me a great job today at Honda. So to say that all of our kids need to have a four-year education, that ain't right for every child. Some childs are not made to go to college. They don't have everything maybe like what I have. But I think our schools are in great shape. Our schools are beautiful. We have the best teachers. We have the best facilities. My, uh, my son graduated with a dual robot classes, went into Jackson State almost as a sophomore. Uh, we continue those programs. We build on those programs. We make them better for our future students. We never stop improving. We don't want to go backwards, forward. That's what we need to do. And if, like Stephen says on the one cent sales tax, I'll, I'll vote for that a hundred times over. Whatever our students need, I am for. If it's for a better education, I'm for. But I will give them a good one and all the principals, talk with them, meet with them. If they have concerns, more than likely I would favor anything that our students would need. Thank you. Children are probably our greatest resource that we as, we as a, a parent have. And the, the best thing that we can do for them is prepare them for their future. And one, one is through education. Several years ago, Dr. Moody uh, took, a group, took a group from Germany into the schools. And through that, through that tour, brought Kronospan to the city. Our schools are one of the, the turning points in their decision of whether to come here or to go somewhere else. As far as the uh, have we given enough to the schools? That's a question that nobody knows the answer to. And one is that new pro is that new program. Are they funded for that new program? They may not be that. So we have to give that money to them. The schools are not really a money making organization. They're an education facility, and we're there to support them. That was made. That decision was made by people, some very smart people back in the '70s, back when Mr. Casty, and they made a decision that Oxford would have their own school system. One of the best decisions we've ever made. And I think our children and our education are one of the things that make Oxford what it is today. Thank you.
want you to listen carefully to me. I don't mean to offend anyone. I don't want anyone to take this aside the wrong way. We have a lot of service jobs in Oxford. There's nothing wrong with a service job. We all can't be doctors. We all can't be lawyers. Everybody has to do something. But if we do not provide our schools with every dollar they need, you can count on it that no industry worth having here in Oxford will ever come unless we fully fund our schools. The school, to, the school needs to stop getting money when Dr. Cooper says we have enough. Those are the best dollars we can spend if we expect to develop a workforce that will attract industry that is worth having in Oxford. Like I said, there's nothing wrong with service jobs. People have to do those things. We need those things. They're very important. But if we expect to have high tech or high paying jobs, we have to make ourselves stand above all the other cities that are competing for those jobs. So any industry that seeks to come to Oxford, they should get a marvelous first impression by looking at our schools, our school facilities, and how they're funded. Thank you. Well, one of the things I think that, um, as far as education goes, I remember being at a school board meeting, and I was principal at an, at an elementary school here at the elementary school in Oxford. And uh, Pat Wayne Shaddix, who was on the school board, said we were talking about the greatest uh, test scores that children had here in Oxford, and they, and they always do. And that's because of the support that they get from the city. But one of the things he said was, we get more bang for our buck here in Oxford, and that's because Oxford doesn't really, as far as the millage goes in here in Oxford, there it's not that much higher than other places, but we do get more bang for our buck because our, our council goes outside of what they have to do and give beyond that to programs that they need. You know, going back to what I was saying about um, police officers and firefighters, we have to pay, we have to have a high rate of pay to get qualified teachers. So I think that's one thing that we have to remember. And we do have a really nice rate of pay here in Oxford. And one of the reasons that we can continue that is because of the money that's donated from the city toward that. And um, teachers, you know, we want to have the best teachers. We do have the best teachers. And the reason we do is because we have the workplace for them to work in every day. They feel very comfortable going in our schools. They have the materials they need, and they have a lot of support from the administrators there in their buildings. And that is um, a really strong selling point for our school. And then that, therefore, leads us to bringing in commerce and businesses to our area. The schools are the lifeblood of this community. Education has always been important to me and my family. My dad here, Dan Henderson, is here. He served 38 years in the education business. He was a superintendent of the county schools for a number of years. So education is important to me. As council president, I got together with the other council members. And we wanted to establish a regular meeting with the school board and Dr. Goodwin, the superintendent. We did that. We, we sat down with them and reviewed their financial statements. We reviewed, we reviewed their capital plan. And doing that, we determined what their needs were going to be, what they wanted to offer to our kids. They wanted to offer the best curriculum they could offer. They wanted to offer music, arts, languages, things like that. So in order to do, to do that, they had to hire additional teachers. So we knew they didn't have the funding. They were only getting about $1.7 million per year from the city. We knew that we had to increase the funding of the school, so we asked them how much money they needed, and they told us how much money it was somewhere around $4.8. We increased that allocation 182%, 1.7 to $4.8 million, what they requested. That way they were all able to offer those classes and everything. 
We all looked at their capital needs. They needed a new high school. They, they needed to make improvements to the DR Mobile School, which we had purchased from them. And so we were able to allocate. We went to, to New York. We borrowed $26 million, and we gave them the money to build a freshman academy and a new high school. So education was important to that council, and it's important to me because of the, you know, my family relationship with that. And so, we, you know, we need to continue to support our schools, but there are other things besides our schools. We do need to look at our revenues and, and see what the needs of the city are and support the needs of the city. But I do 100% support the schools and the teachers. Thank you. Yeah, I support the education uh, for Oxford. I've been inside of uh, all of our schools here, and uh, uh, I've enjoyed going in through every one of them. Uh, it's, it's just uh, remarkable how the schools look. The teachers are doing a real good job. I've, I've talked to them. Uh, they're, uh, a lot of us do a lot of volunteer work. Uh, you know, I want to mention also GED. You know, uh, we do have programs for GED. Uh, people can uh, can go in and get a GED now. and. Uh, I think the, uh, the teachers that goes in uh, volunteers their time to to uh, get some get uh, the students a GED. I think that's very good for the city of Oxford. And uh, uh, also, uh, we're, we're the best in our st uh, state as far as our schools. Uh, if, if I'm elected uh, uh, place five, I will continue to, uh, to to move forward with our education. Thank you.